from Tuesday or uh, from Wednesday or Thursday, one of them, um, on this platform, we had our highest criticism ever in the history since we started this particular channel. Because one of our pundits, Derek Money to be specific, said something about Rapa Edem that uh, went out to uh, me in something else. Unfortunately, there was no defense for this, so what we had to do was to do the for to apologize to Adam who was bruised or whose ego was hurt one way or the other for that comment my panel member made. And as a matter of fact, all the team members here at Sami Flex TV, of course, we know some of these things, how they play out. When it happens like that, everybody should just come on board and we say sorry and we move on. And I'm sure we have said sorry in different terms, in different fashion and we can move on with our lives but when all these things were happening I observed something what I observed was that you know when people are looking for the least opportunity to take a dig at you even if you are clean and a debt a little debt passes through your clothes or even your skin everybody will take advantage of that and I observed that I think over the weekend, where entertainment people, both on traditional media and both online, took advantage of my panel members' uh, mistake or blunder and decided to take a swipe at us. It was cool. As a matter of fact, I keep saying that in this world, if you are in this part of our industry, you talk about people and you are scared of what someone else will say about you, then you are not ready, then you are in the wrong profession because this is what we do. Our business is to talk. Our business is to critique. Our business is to review. Our business is to discuss. Our business is to share opinion and knowledge. Therefore, sometimes what someone will share, it might not sit well with you, but that is what they know. That is what they think. That is their opinion. What else can you do? You can't do anything. And I observed everything online. From Twitter, those who were talking out of contest, giving it to those who are supposed to receive it, voto, 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 like that. It wasn't easy. But of course, me, I have tasted this since, 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 since. I keep saying that I have been that guy when it comes to entertainment discussion on the radio. So I've tested it from all fan bases. SM people hitting at me, uh, high grade people, SAC Nation, Beam Nation. If I take it anywhere, someone is hitting at me. So to I see young people on Twitter and on Facebook and on Instagram writing BS, I just laugh because I know I've seen it a couple of times and I'm just used to it and I know how it happens. The good thing is that if I'm in a good mood, if I have some free time and I want to reply to you and I want to respond to you, then woe to you because I know how to also do it. Yeah, I know how to be abusive if I want to. But if I don't want to, then you might think that, okay, maybe Sammy Flex is scared. No, Sammy Flex was never born a coward. I was only born to be respectful. I really respect every Tom, Dick, and Harry that will come through my life. But to say, oh, I'm scared, I'm afraid, no. Look into my eyes. Do you see fears? <laughs> I remember the late president, um, John Evans Atavio, said this. Look into my eyes. Do you see fears? No, there is no fear there. But one of them that I would want to respond to specifically is Kodja Sheldon. And this has become very important. I respond to it because whilst everybody was doing their own thing, which I saw was what was ish, what was the ish at the time, what was in vogue, so everybody was just taking advantage to do something, I realized that Kodja Sheldon took advantage and recorded a full session for me. I think about 15 minute session. And I pray I do less or maybe more of what he did in response to him. He recorded a full session for me with a title, Dear Sammy Flex. Fortunately, I had time whilst I was in Kumasi. So whilst I was resting in one, in one afternoon in my hotel room, I saw a notification pop up from other places and I said, oh, it, it might be a love letter, at least Val's Day is here. So let me check what Kodja Sheldon had written or what he had said about me. I spent time, 15 minutes, to watch the video. And in short, this is Kodja Sheldon who thinks that, oh, Sammy Flex has goofed. So let me take advantage of this goof and tell him what I have to tell him. Once again, it is normal. 
I did a video on um, DJ Slim and shout outs to DJ Slim. When I did a video, I made him know that, yeah, bro, I heard you say this. Now, this is what I also have to say. And he also came back, did another video, and I took time and I worked that as well. There is no bad feeling or there is no negative energy behind this. It is about the profession, what we think, what we know, and that's what we are doing. But in Kodisha, this case, he made it so obvious that this is someone that I'm looking forward to punch, and I've gotten him. And before he started, he said, I'm coming to rant, I'm coming to rant. Obviously, when people rant, sometimes they say things with no sense, because that is rant. People don't rant with wisdom like that. When people rant, they obviously will say so many things that carry no weight. So, in the process of his rant, he said so many things that carried no way. In fact, what he was trying to even pin me for doing, unfortunately for him, he has been the first culprit of this. And I'm going to show you a video. I'm going to show you a video so you know what I'm talking about. That he, what he was accusing me for, he's the first culprit. And the person who he even allowed, or whoever he did that with, also saw the need to call the person involved to apologize. I'm going to show you this video. Watch it. When I come back, I'll explain what this video means to you. I'll be right back. What, what, what would make someone like an investor say, no, this is not something, a viable investment. Yes. Like investment. Yes. Uh, me, me in particular, I'm not a fan of, like, for example, Shakawale. When he's doing, like, his videos and all of that, I'm not a fan of how he portrays himself mm -hmm. and all of those things. Because I feel like this is, it's just like a banker. You know what I'm saying? You can't just wear some t-shirts, talk, like, do some, you can't just do anyhow. You know what I'm saying? But when he does anyhow, speaks in how and all of these things. It makes the crap look like I'm just trying to be honest. I'm just showing you how it goes and stand up like that in particular. I feel like it makes investors see us as jokers. songs flying he was on a promotional tour and he went to Kodjo Sheldon's studio and um, during one of their conversations Kodjo Sheldon asked him what I think what he thinks about our industry and investors and what they make of Shatawale's behavior and blah 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 and do you know what he said he said yes some investors will not see us serious because of how sometimes we behave and he emphasized on Shatawale that sometimes the way Shatawale handles his issues online, some of the ways Shatawale says this and that, it makes him look like a joker. It was not Camido alone who used the word joker. There was another lady, or there were some ladies on the panel, including him, Koju Sheldon. That lady also said joker. So, in short, on that particular set, Camido saying Joker, and the lady also uh, describing Shatawale as Joker. So, these two people describe Shatawale as Jokers. And interestingly, when the video came out, of course, because it was also a dent on Shatawale's brand for someone to describe him, not even just one person, two people to describe him as a joke or as a Joker. I'm sure even if he found it cool, he did not say much. And the fans did their thing. And Camilo saw the need to call Shatawale. And I'm going to show you evidence. Because after he had called him, after Camilo had called Shatawale to apologize, he came out with a screenshot of talking to him about, uh, some, they spent some time talking, and he said that, uh, maybe let me see, I can read this so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So this is what um, Camilo also wrote and shared on his Twitter page, where he said, I honestly didn't mean to disrespect Kinshata in any way. Listen to this, though. I honestly didn't mean to disrespect Kinshata in any way. I should have taken time to share my opinion without mentioning names, pointing fingers. I'm sincerely sorry to you all. Thank you, Shatawali, for understanding and the advice. So you see how this world is. When he was thinking that, Sammy Flex, I'm the devil in this world. So I allowed a pundit to uh, say something that was not good about Adam. Now, the internet will always be 
raised. Because like we keep saying, the internet doesn't forget. What he was accusing me for, he has been the first culprit. What he was accusing me for, he has been the first culprit. My years of this game, I've never said anything about anybody that has called me to apologize before. Never. Nobody can come in the history of my career to say that, oh, some time ago you said this and this person uh, told you to apologize. Never. Because I'm always careful. I'm always cautious on what I say. I'm always careful what I, I do about people because I know people have feelings. I know people have emotions. And what you say can hurt them emotionally or physically. So me, I will never do that. So if unfortunately someone does it on my platform and you think that because someone has done it, you take advantage of that to take a dig at me, you messed up big time. You messed up because you did not see that, no, this is not a Sami Flex doing. So what you are accusing me for, look at this, look at this evidence. What you were accusing me for, what you accused me for, look at this evidence. Two people, it was not just one person, no. Two people, Camilo, including a certain lady who was part of the panel, describing Shatawale as a joker. And at that time, I'm sure you saw it to be cool. At that time, you did not see it to be disrespecting. At that time, you felt it was okay for two of your panel members to describe another artist, someone who is a pay setter in the industry, someone who has achieved so much in the industry, someone who has blessed you with so much content for you to get to where you are. You, you, you thought it was okay for people to describe him as Joker. But when a panel member sat here, and said something that even in the video, those who have seen the video critically will see that I did not agree with him. On so many okay, when he started, I said, ah, how? Then the guy asked me, ah, how, saying? Because I did not agree with him. I will never say such a thing. I know my game. I will never say such a thing. When I said how, he did not agree with me. I asked him counter question for him to know that I did not agree with him. He continued. And that, and that was the point that I said, oh, no, I've collapsed. Someone should take me to the hospital. Because I realized that what I did rather meant I, I, I was seeing what he was saying as some play. Like, no, you can't say this. That was why I said I have collapsed. Someone should take me to the hospital. Because I thought that, okay, this is not what is right. This thing you are saying does not even make sense to me as the host. So, and if you understand this social media gimmick, you would understand when someone says, oh, shift and let me collapse, it means whatever that was happening did not make sense. So, shift and let me collapse. That was what I did. But you were in the video, like you said, ranting on SS really, that yes, it was because I supported what, was the, what the guy was saying. It was because I supported the tomfoolery the guy was playing here. No, I did not support it. Everything from my actions and everything in the video proved that I was willing to change the guy's course. I was willing to let him know that now nah, what you are saying is not right. Take a different course. But of course, there's a pandit, and I've seen it before. So many panel members, when they are on a trajectory, it is hard for you to change their direction. It is hard, very, very hard for you to change their direction. And we saw an apology from Camilo to um, Shatawale. You, did you apologize to Shatawale in any way? I feel so humble anytime I'm doing this. I feel so humble and down because I know without these guys, we are nobodies, maybe. That is why when it came out that Adam was offended, I did not even spend time talking plenty. I came, I called the gentleman who said that in the studio and we apologized to him. Yes. We apologize for him. And I want to believe by now the apology has gone down well. But you did not. I'm sure you would have proven to be hard. You would have proven to be stubborn. Same way you've done to Shatawale that now you cannot mention Shatawale and when you're on your platform you're saying and your man and you talked about your favorite artist. Yes, it was pride that took you there. It was pride that brought you there. Everybody at all can mention any name freely in Ghana except you. Try to mention Shatawale and maybe you might go to jail. Try to mention Shatawale and we, maybe we will suffer something that only you know. So you see, pride. 
if you were so humble when Shatawale started saying, don't do this, don't do that, you would have found a nice way to calm things down. But here yeah, you thought you were the one. You thought you were the ish. It is just time, so relax. It is just time. Relax. And oh, before I wrap up, I'm so proud of my studio. 